it's something really important to me in sharing because a lot of my life I felt really alone and isolated and I also didn't know what I was going through wasn't normal. So I think spreading the message of mental health and mental illness is important so people can feel like less alone. Yeah, I love that message. Hello sippers and welcome to the first Conversations Over a Cuppa for 2023. My name's Sam, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a member of the brand team here at T2. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're meeting on today and their continued connections to waters, earth and cultures. In July of 2022, the Australian Bureau of Statistics released findings from a recent study. They stated that two in every five Australians aged 16 to 85 have experienced a mental disorder of some sort at some point in their lives. Today, I'm joined by someone who knows firsthand the difficulties in overcoming a mental health battle. She lives unapologetically herself on social media, promoting a message of loving the skin you're in. Welcome, Ash Paraskibis. <laughs> round of applause, round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Hello. You. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Cheers. I'm really excited. Thank Cheers. you. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about like your background and yeah. why you're so vocal about mental health? Of course. So I guess mental health and mental illness has affected me pretty much my whole life. And it's also been in my family because um, often it can either be like inherited or it can come from like your environment and what you've been through. And mine's a bit of both. Yeah. So I like had domestic violence in my life and also um, struggle with a parent that goes that both parents that have mental illness um, and it's been something that's just been a theme throughout my life it really impacts your decisions and the way you live yeah. and your interactions so it's something really important to me in sharing because a lot of my life I felt really alone and isolated going through what I went through. And I also didn't know what I was going through wasn't normal. So I think spreading the message of mental health and mental illness is important so people can feel like less alone. Yeah, I love that message. And I guess before we really, you know, deep dive into everything today, I guess, should we differentiate the, you know, mental health and mental illness? Yes. Right. Yes, I think that's so important. So mental health, the way I like to think about mental health is like your well-being, your mental health, like your physical health. Like everyone has it. Everyone needs to make sure their mind is cared for just like they care for their body. But when it's mental illness, that's like a chemical imbalance or something that's impacting your life so much that you can't do things every day when your mental health is really on the low side that it's really affecting you and it's causing something that needs professional help yeah I guess for someone who you know lives their life on social media what impacts has social media and having you know the perfect Instagram photo had on you know your life and, and your career when I was consuming social media as a kid, I'd always see models. I'd always be following models and skinny girls and perfect people with like all this money and on perfect holidays with perfect boyfriends and girlfriends <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I always just felt like I wasn't good enough. Like I consume that content being a fragile person because I am vulnerable to self-criticism and comparison. So I started off very much trying to be perfect like that's how I started my social media um, I got into pageants and my whole life I pretty much was hiding my true self so I would go and I'd go in real life and I'd spend money on things that I can't spend money on like designer things that I was like working you know my retail job like trying to work overtime and get as many ships as possible so I could buy this GG bag you know what I yeah. mean because that's everywhere I want to be like that and I noticed that when I was posting like that 1% type of content, the audience that I was getting and the response I was getting was very much like, oh my God, you're so perfect. Like your boyfriend's so perfect. You're always so happy. You're so bubbly. Like what do you use on your teeth? Your hair's always so amazing. Like how do you do your hair? How do you wear your makeup? It was all very like superficial, like thinking, people thinking and comparing themselves to me. And like behind the scenes, I'm literally... I literally just put on that put on that outfit and put on makeup for that photo. 
And it was so staged because that's the job that I had. Yeah. But secretly it was during COVID and I was in my bed and I was depressed, like take away food everywhere. Like I'm like, oh, I can't get out of bed, but I got out of bed for that photo. And that's what people are looking at. And they're thinking that I'm perfect. And I'm like, no, I'm going through depression. And then over time, I was just so exhausted. I couldn't keep it up. So I started posting my reality through my eating disorder and my depression and my mental illness. And the response now is not about me. It's about how I've impacted them mm. and how they feel consuming my content and how they feel more inspired. Yeah, I'm really, I'm a lot more fulfilled just being myself and being 100% me because I think when you're 100% you, you allow for other people to be 100% themselves too. So that was a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... But yeah, it's, yeah, I hope that made sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a super important message. So while you're using your platform for good, I guess you, you have some really frank conversations with, you know, your followers, mm. um, sort of breaking down that, that stigma of, of mental health. Why do you think it's so important for us to have those conversations? I think the more conversations we have about mental health, the less negative impacts we're going to have because the more community and the more conversations, the more people feel safe. Yeah. And the more people feel safe, the more likely they're going to get help. And then that professional help is going to support them so they can live a better life. I think it needs to be respected more widely. Like I think often, Often being physically ill is a lot more socially acceptable. People are like, oh, yeah, like you can't do that. You have a cough, like you need to go and rest. But when it's not visible, people don't really understand and they're not as open. It should be seen as okay to open up those conversations, especially yeah. at work. Like it should be okay to talk to your supervisor and being like, I'm not okay and I need time off. Even if I look like I'm doing okay, like mentally I'm really struggling. Yeah. Um, here at T2, we are, as of December um, last year, we're accredited um, as we have 5% of our workforce are accredited mental health first aiders, including myself actually. So, yeah, I agree. I think it's so important that we have those conversations and be able to, um, you know, raise your hand and say, I'm actually not okay at the moment. And yeah. like what resources are available to me to make sure that I am better. Because when you see a Band-Aid on someone, you know that someone's yeah. not physically well, yeah. but you can't see a mental Band-Aid. Yeah. So we need to have, yeah break down that stigma and, and have conversations that matter so that we can sort of, yeah, feel like feel like mental health doesn't need to be held in the shadows like yeah and it's so nice to know that people can go to those to people that have that have that training that know you know what to say what not to say because there are those things that you do need to be wary of and hold space for them and also listen to their needs and be like okay this is what you need I can advocate for you as well you know within the company system and be like this person's struggling mentally they need this this and this or push them and guide them into a direction where they can get that extra help too and I think that's amazing yeah now I know that you have a few tips and tricks in your tool belt uh, <laughs> of of you know mental health yes. um what sort of tips and tricks have, have you implemented in your own life to create a more positive mental health atmosphere around you? Definitely professional help. <laughs> I feel like that's such yeah. a big thing. Yeah. Like um, safety plans, going to therapy, having someone to support me. Biggest thing because often you can't really support yourself sometimes. Yeah. But every day, routine, 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 routine building positive events, which is something that I learned in DBT therapy. So it's kind of like building your uh, resilience and building your um, ability to deal with things on a daily. So like yeah. making your bed every day makes you feel a bit more positive, like brushing your teeth, doing your skincare, eating something, three meals a day, having those set things kind of build you up. So when those hard things do hit you, you've got a bit more armor to bounce off. And trying to socialize, like making sure that I socialize and I build connections and that I keep connections because 
being social is such an important, like we are humans, we need social interaction. Yeah. So just doing something that gives you joy, surrounding yourself with like things you love and keeping a routine, keeping some sort of purpose. I've also seen on, on Instagram, uh, finger breathing. Yes. Can you teach me? Yes, of finger course. Finger breathing and maybe for our sippers as well, if you're watching. Yes, I we'll would love to. do some finger breathing to. together. So bring your hand, any hand, you hold it up mm -hmm. or you can have it down low if you want to be more discreet and you breathe in by going up and tracing your thumb up, hold, breathe out by going down and tracing your thumb down, breathe in and breathe out by tracing each individual finger, breathe in, going up, breathe out, going down and you just start again. That is so calming. I know. So you breathe in, out, in, out, in, out. And it's really nice because it gives you a little tickle too. Mm. So it's like it's also like sensory. Yeah. Yeah. And it just brings me down to earth. Um, it reminds me that, you know, I'm safe. I've got myself. I'm here. I'm in my body. And then I try and just notice some things around me. What can I see? What can I hear? What can I smell? How, like, what's my breath doing? All those things. And it really grounds me back to earth and my body. And I feel like I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. As someone who has uh, had battles with mental illness, how did you go about getting the help that you needed to, you know, get healthy again? Yeah. Okay. I love this question. So starting off, you need to confide in someone. So yeah. if you're going through a really hard time, that can be through Beyond Blue, Lifeline, any of those lines of professional services, or you can confide in a friend or a family member to support, be that support person and validate you. And then from there, see your GP, they'll set you up with a mental health plan um, from there, you can link up with the psychologist and maybe a psychiatrist and any extra help that you need beyond that. If you were to think back to the beginning of your mental health wellness journey, mm -hmm. what what do you wish that you had been told at the very beginning as like how to start that wellness journey? Honestly, at the time, I just needed to be told like, you're enough. Yeah. And just as you are, like literally you're so worthy and I'm going to hold your hand through every step, through every dark day and we're going to get somewhere and this is not going to be forever. Mm. You've got this. And then I'd probably hand them a sheet of all the different contacts they need to start contacting and be like, take that first step and talk to someone you trust yeah. because your life is worth fighting for and yeah. you're worth fighting for. And you're so special even if you don't see it. And that's yeah. literally just what I needed, like a big hug and someone to be like, I see you, yeah, I feel you, I validate you and I'm here to hold your hand through this. Yeah, the sunshine breaks through the rain clouds, I promise. Yeah. yeah. Well, a big thank you to you, Ash, for coming here today. It's been a really important discussion and I'm so very thankful we've got to have this time. Um, and I thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you've pulled something out of this. We have some incredible resources available for you. If you head to our website, t2t.com, um, and follow the links uh, if you need, or if you want to give those to your friends to get the support that, that they need as well. And on that note, happy sipping. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>